Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about the Mark 48 shore bombardment computer, and um, we've got another video in our battles series. This one, the invasion of Guam, or the second battle of Guam. This was a land battle that Battleship New Jersey participated in as part of the naval bombardment forces operating under Fifth Fleet. Guam is the largest of the Marianas Islands and was one of three of the islands that the U.S. Navy wanted to invade to take over as air bases for the further bombardment of the uh, late war campaigns against the Philippines, uh, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and mainland Japan eventually. Uh, in fact, the B-29s that firebombed and eventually nuked Japan flew from the Marianas Islands. Initially, the three islands of Saipan, Tinian, and Guam were going to be invaded within relatively short order. However, following the invasions of Saipan and Tinian, the Japanese realized the attack was coming at the Marianas and launched their defensive plan to defend the islands. The U.S. fleet, including Battleship New Jersey, pulled back to fight a major surface battle, what would become known as the Battle of the Philippine Sea, where the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot, uh, which we will cover in a future video, was fought. And then Fifth Fleet, after winning that battle, came back to provide the naval gunfire support for the in eventual invasion of Guam, uh, which came a couple weeks later than planned. The Mark 48 computer is part of the gunfire solution system uh, built into Iowa-class battleships. The Mark 48 was added to New Jersey at some point in the early 50s during the Korean War. Uh, this was not a World War II piece of equipment for the Iowas. The Iowas were designed to fight naval battles, and uh, shore bombardment was only a secondary function for them. It was usually performed by the older battleships of the fleet. However, by the end of the war, the fast carrier task forces were also conducting their own naval bombardments, such as the bombardment of Japan right at the end of the war. Uh, and the Iowa-class battleships would remain in service for decades, uh, specifically because of the naval bombardment support that they could provide that other ships couldn't. And so, sometime in the early 50s, the first Mark 48 was added here in forward plot, and later in the ship's career, probably in the early 80s, a second Mark 48 was added to aft plot. Battleship New Jersey still has our forward plot computer, but the one in aft plot has been removed, and there's just the mounting brackets in the deck. This computer works in concert with the range finders and the Mark 8 range keeper to plot a gunnery solution for a target you can't see. So for example, troops hit the invasion beach, they go over the hill, and there are enemy emplacements beyond that that a ship at sea level cannot see. Using the range finder, you would find the range to a known location something like a lighthouse or another fixed uh, navigation point. Then, that information comes into the uh, Mark 48 here. You would have a chart laid out over the computer, you would plot your information in the computer, and the bug would move to where you're telling it to. And basically, you're finding the offset from your known target to what it is you want to shoot at. So you know that that is two miles in X direction from the target that you can hit with your range keeper, or range finder, excuse me, and then you're using the, this computer to figure out where it is the target that is being called in by your spotters. Then this offset information is sent to the Mark 8 range keeper, and the solution is programmed just like a traditional naval gunnery solution. Then the information uh, goes up to the guns, they aim at the target, and you use the stable vertical to fire the guns. So you're just adding one extra step. In a naval battle, rate of fire matters, but in shore bombardment, typically you're firing one shot uh, and then waiting to see where the fall of shot lands before you plot your next solution based on that information. Uh, and so rate of fire is not as significant a factor, and it's not an issue to add another analog computer into uh, the train of information. Naval bombardments are usually conducted using spotters. Either a spotter aircraft flying over the target, and Battleship New Jersey always carries spotting aircraft, whether they were the World War II float planes, 
helicopters or uh, more modern drones, those could provide information to the gunners down here. Additionally, observers on the ground could spot targets for the infantry units that they were supporting and then call that back to the ships and say what their position was. Typically, the maps would be pre-gridded out before a battle with individual locations labeled, uh, much like the board game Battleship. And so, when a gunnery solution is uh, called for by a land position, they would say, hey, we, we've got a uh, enemy blockhouse at J-10. Uh, and so the battleship, you go on your chart, you use your rangefinder to aim at a close point that you know, you use your offset here from the chart, from that close point you know to J-10, and then you send this back to the computer, and it plots that offset so that your guns can fire. The invasion of Guam, much like the other amphibious invasions of World War II, was initiated with aerial and naval bombardments. In the pre-invasion bombardment, 45,000 shells from the 274 supporting warships and 4,000 bombs weighing around 1,300 tons were dropped on the island. Aircraft spotted positions that could be plotted for the battleships to target, and a force of battleships and cruisers came in towards the island after minesweepers had cleared uh, the area around the invasion beaches. Then these ships come in and begin the bombardment. An outer ring beyond these battleships and cruisers conducting the uh, shore bombardment was maintained by destroyers and lighter craft protecting against submarines. Further out at sea, the aircraft carrier task forces formed a greater quadrant using their aircraft to spot for enemy submarines and also enemy warships in case the Japanese fleet came out. They could screen the invasion. By the invasion of Guam, Battleship New Jersey was a veteran of shore bombardments. In March and April of 1944, she had bombarded Mille in the Marshall Islands, Wolai and Truk in the Caroline Islands, uh, as well as Ponape. Uh, and in June, she had bombarded Saipan, Tinian, Guam, and Palau, all in the Marianas Island chains. The American invasion of the islands involved some 60,000 troops, mostly Marines. During the several week battle, they suffered 7,794 killed in action. The Japanese garrison was some 22,500 troops, roughly equivalent to the pre-war civilian population of the island. 19,500 of them were killed in action, with only 1,250 captured. Later amphibious invasions would benefit from the lessons learned in the Marshall Islands, particularly uh, the defenses of Saipan and Tinian you see major changes in the Japanese defenses of Iwo Jima and Okinawa following the Marianas campaign. However, Guam, taking place just a week or so after the initial invasions, could not benefit from this. And so, like with earlier war Japanese invasions, Japanese troops had open, exposed pill houses and bunkers. They contested the invasion right at the invasion beaches, and when they were defeated at the beaches, they launched bonsai charges to try and push the Americans back into the sea. By this point in the war, American rifle platoons were heavily supplemented with automatic weapons uh, and mortars and uh, heavy machine gun units supplemented company-level units. Uh, and so, charges against these dug-in American positions on the invasion beaches were hugely devastating to the Japanese, even more so than earlier bonsai charges made famous during the Guadalcanal campaign. Because the Japanese needlessly threw away lives during these bonsai charges, the defense was not as effective as it could have been uh, and was proven to be at later campaigns. An interesting facet of the uh, two battles of Guam was that uh, the island of Guam is fairly large and so survivors were able to hide out for a long time. A U.S. Navy sailor and radioman 
by the name of George Ray Tweed had managed to evade capture when the Japanese invaded Guam and was the only American to be able and live off the land with heavy help from the uh, local population for some 31 months before he revealed himself during the pre-invasion bombardment and an American destroyer could send a boat ashore and pick him up uh, so that he could give them critical information prior to the actual invasion. His 31 months may sound impressive. Sergeant Masasashi Ito managed to survive on the island until 1960 following the 1944 invasion. Sergeant Shoichi Yokoi survived on the island until 1972, 12 years longer uh, and some 28 years with the island under American occupation. And these two individuals were not uh, the longest uh, surviving Japanese soldiers to live off of the land. We'll talk about them more in future uh, videos. What's your favorite amphibious invasion to study? Guam is not one I had previously looked into, and I wasn't aware of the soldiers who had survived on the island uh, long after the invasion. That was really interesting for me to find out. Let us know what your favorite invasions to study are in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from a number of other businesses and individuals like yourselves. Uh, the support you guys have given us over the years is tremendous, and there's a link in the description if you would like to continue supporting the museum and our YouTube channel. It allows us to keep making content like this. And it gives me the freedom to do research into battles like this one I didn't previously know much about. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel and our videos. That way, you find out when we're putting out new content and other people find out that our channel and our museum exists. Thanks for watching.